Hello, and welcome back to season three of Black Joy and Bootstraps with your host, Felicia Jimenez. And y'all, I have so much to catch y'all up on. Um, I know it's been almost a year since my last drop and um, last season only had like four episodes and we ended abruptly. So uh, I wanted to make sure that I addressed the elephant in the room and told you guys what the heck happened. Um, so a few things I wanted to talk about. One, uh, why did it end? Two, what the heck I've been doing since then. And three, what can we expect from this season? And I'm really excited to talk about all of them. So I hope that you will stay around for the ride um, because we have some really great episodes and some really great people. Um, and I just kind of want to catch y'all up. Like I've really missed y'all. So I appreciate all the uh, emails, messages, texts that are like, what the heck are you doing? Where's the episodes? And so um, y'all know how I feel about my community. You know how I feel about doing this work. And so... Uh, without any further ado, I just want to tell y'all what I've been up to. Hey, Black Joy and Bootstraps, the podcast that you really need. Helping my Black community, good vibes, good energy. Black Joy and Bootstraps, top financial literacy, love and education. Want to see my people elevated. Yeah. Okay, so um, last season, I started off the... Um, uh, episodes with uh, you, talking about unifying the diaspora. And my goal in that was to reach out to people, um, Black people, again, across the, across the diaspora, and just really get their perspective of what it means to be Black and their experiences and things like that. And so it was a really good season. I thought that it started out well. It was my baby. I was really happy with um, the results. And it was my first time coming to YouTube. So y'all know YouTube was completely new for me. And um, let me be honest, YouTube was a different beast. And I will explain why. So uh, what ended up happening is I posted it on YouTube. Um, and one episode where I had uh, three panelists uh, on. It was a really great episode. So I thought um, I got some really good feedback on it, but I don't know where it was posted, but it was posted somewhere and it just kind of went crazy. Um, and so what ended up happening is uh, a lot of people got on YouTube and were not very happy because one of our guests on the panelists said that her family is from the Caribbean. She's black. Um, she's first generation American, but she considers herself not only Trinidadian American, but African American. Uh, and so a lot of people came in and y'all, when I tell you all hell broke loose, I absolutely mean it. All hell broke loose. Like my comment section was completely wild. Um, and I'd never experienced anything like that in particular. And, um, and I want to say so much of that is because as you all know, I am not a stranger to conflict. I've had, uh, episodes where it had me beefing with my, um, local city officials, my mayor, my city council members. And so, um, but also they're not from my community. So I didn't expect them to understand anything that I was saying. I didn't expect them to love the podcast that is giving information and bootstraps right to my own community. I didn't expect that. So, um, I didn't expect to receive love from them. Therefore, when I received the opposite of love, I couldn't care less. I moved the same way I had been moving. Um, and they weren't my, um, they were not my targeted audience. So imagine my surprise when my target audience, um, my own community, the black community came in and they were like, this is so stupid. Um, I can't believe she thinks she's African-American. You can't change your ethnicity. And y'all, there was some, I'm talking about some horrible things said. And it really made me take a step back because please understand, I am not someone who can't take criticism like all day long, especially for my community. If I am trying to uplift my community, then I very well expect constructive criticism from my community. Um, but it was, I mean, it, it started out as like a really good conversation in the comments and then it just kind of went left and, and so I didn't, I will be honest in saying like, I didn't know how to control that because up until this point, I had several episodes in my first season um, and people loved them. They were like, oh my goodness, this is great information. I didn't know how to start a company. I didn't know how to do stocks and bonds. I didn't know what those things were. Um, I felt more comfortable buying a home now that I, you know, listen to your podcast and things like that. And so listening to or reading these comments and people are just like calling me names and saying, I don't know my history. And, um, that was really tough for me. So I wanted to bring, I wanted to 
bring that up immediately because I wanted to um, fully be transparent about what happened to me and why I dropped off the face of the earth, because that was really hard. Um, it was one of those moments where I was like, oh my gosh, am I even doing this right? When all I wanted to do was bring on these people to let you know that no matter where you come from, we black, right? And we um, we should love one another. I literally named it unifying the diaspora. So I in no way intended harm, but I think when you um, do harm intentionally or unintentionally, then there needs to be an apology. And that is what I was doing in the comments. Like I was like, I'm so sorry if, you know, this came off this way, that was not our intentions. And, um, and so I felt really, that was just really hard for me. I'm going to be honest. And, and so I kind of went into this shell of, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I'm ready. I don't know if, um, if I can recover from this. And I know some people are probably listening to this or watching this and going, girl, it was not that big of a deal. Like you're being sensitive, but I think you have to understand my mission and my purpose, which is to always uplift and give information to my community. And so when I felt as though I had failed my community and my community was looking at me like, what is this? This is BS. Like you are stupid. You don't know your history. You're ignorant. They're not us. We're not them. And there was like this division and I literally named it unifying the diaspora um, that really hit me hard. And it was also very offensive because the people I had on the panel were my very good friends, um, people that were very close to me that I love dearly. And so to see those attacks also aimed at them, um, that's the part that really, really tore me down more than anything. So I think it's one thing to do it to me. It's another thing to do it to the people that I love. Um, and to call them out. And it wasn't just that there were other issues that were taken with it, but that was the biggest part. It got so bad that I literally, like you can go to the video now. I turned off the comments because I was like, this is crazy. And it's not because I didn't want to respond. It's because I literally felt the need to protect my friends, even though they were like, it's fine. It's whatever people are going to have their thoughts. But as the host of this podcast, I didn't feel right allowing people to continue to bash um, my friends. And so feel free, um, go listen to those episodes, I still think that they're great. I still think that they gave great knowledge. I think it was a lot of mending and healing and conversations that needed to happen. Um, I mean, when we talk about Dominicans and Haitians, period, we got a Dominican and a Haitian on the pot on the podcast. And I mean, for those of you who are familiar with that history, it is very intense. It is full of colorism. It is full of um of hatred and envy and anger and lots of things. And so um, you know, we briefly touched on things that I thought were were really intense and so and really informative and educational and helpful to a lot of people because, um, you know, again, why is it that Dominicans don't say that they're black when they look just like me and we know that they're black? Or why is it that Haitians have this pride and, you know, people feel like they look down on everybody else? And I just thought that it was a really um, good two part series. So, um, you know, still check it out. Uh, feel free. But I did not want to come back and be like, hey, y'all, season three. And like, y'all are like, but you're going to act like nothing happened. Though. Like, where you been? Um, and so that's kind of what happened. But I want you to know that I did a lot of healing from that. And um, I still want to um, apologize to my community, to anybody that felt as though I did something with malicious intent or that it wasn't meaning to be harmful, but it was um, because my entire intentions of my podcast is, as you guys know, who have been listening from the beginning, each one, uh, teach one. And so whenever we teach one person, um, when we reach one person, uh, we then go on to teach others the same knowledge that we just learned um, to uplift our community. And so if I feel like that objective and that mission was not accomplished, then that is something I have to reflect on and come back to and say, what the heck can I do better next time? Um, and I think that uh, all I can do is see if I have accomplished that in this season, because we have some great people that have been interviewed and um, I'm excited for you guys to hear from them. Now, one, that is why I dropped off the face of the freaking earth. And I'm sorry, but I'm back now and I'm better and I'm healed and I'm like healing. <laughs> so, um, you know, I just want you guys to know that I, I absolutely love my podcast. I love every single thing about it. I love the people that come on. I love the mission. I love the goal. I love the people who shared and say, oh my gosh, have y'all heard this? And, you know, because I do this I, and I know I'm like, it's like beating a dead horse at this point, but I literally do this for my community and I do it for y'all. Um, and I do it for anybody who feels that they have, who 
um, have been historically disenfranchised and systemically oppressed um, and have not been able to receive this information. And these are the things we didn't learn in school, many of us. So I want to be able to share that. Now, y'all, on to number two, though, what have I been doing in the last like 10 months to a year? Because when I tell you I've been doing a lot, I've been doing a lot. So I took time to realize like, Every episode, you'll kind of hear me um, say to the to my guests, like, oh, my gosh, I really want to do that. I really want to do that. That's really cool, um, because I think there's so much of the information is really incredible. Like um, uh, when you're talking about starting a small business or life insurance or health insurance or all these things, like these are things that are absolutely crucial to the black community. And so I wanted to make sure that I had um, that I wasn't just talking about it, that I was being about it. So, y'all. I did like everything I, I talked about in season one. Okay, let's get to it. So I, um, when I talked about, we had Marvin on and forgive me if I miss anyone, but I want you to know, like, this is kind of how busy I've been. I made sure that I was updating my resume in case anything came along. Um, I am now an entrepreneur. Uh, and so I have my own business. I'm doing different things. Multipreneur, um, um, shout out to Zandra who told me that word. And now I'm like, oh yeah, multipreneur. Uh, so multipreneur. I'm doing lots of things. I have, I wear lots of different hats now. Um, like y'all, I'm like LLC Twitter now. You know how they be doing, telling you to get an LLC and get all them cards in your name. I'm not doing that. I'm I'm not on that level yet, but um, I do have my LLCs. Everything's in line. Y'all, I got a whole CPA. What is happening? Like, I feel so fancy. Ain't he black? Ain't he in Atlanta? I'm gonna try to have him on because I need y'all to like know him because he's great. But anyway, um, it has just been really cool. Uh, so I got my life insurance, uh, life health, um, and accidental death like uh, insurance license. And so that has been really cool. Ask me if I've done anything with it. No, I haven't. But don't judge me on that. OK, don't worry about that part. We're going to get to that. Um, but I got the license because I do, again, anything that I do, I want um, I want to be able to have my hand in. It. I want to be able to explain things more thoroughly. Um, and I, as you guys know, from season one, uh, life insurance, it literally changed my life when my mother passed away. And it is just it just has the opportunity to change generations. Uh, and so I want people to have life insurance. I want you to understand it. You don't have to get your license, but I want you to have whole life insurance. I want you to be able to learn how to borrow from your life insurance. I want you to be able to learn how to save with your life insurance, how to be able to set your kids up with your life insurance or your partner or your whoever you want your beneficiary to be like I want you to know those things so I did that um I again started a business I invested in more stocks y'all what is who am I now ask me if I like know a ton about it no but I'm putting money in them things okay like I'm I'm watching and I'm learning um and so that's been really cool the one thing that I have not done I think from season one is um I have not invested yet in investment properties, but I promise it's on the way. I am trying really hard uh, to save and to just, again, create that um, that security and that generational wealth for my kids. Uh, and so, yes, like a lot has changed. And so I hope that in season one, um, that you took that information and you didn't just go, man, that was really cool, but that you actually shared it and that you realized like, oh my gosh, I don't have an updated resume. What the heck? Like, or, you know, oh, and my credit y'all holla at your girl. Cause when I hit them 800s, <laughs> I'm telling you, you couldn't tell me nothing. Okay. Now it did drop out the 800s. Don't, don't worry about that. But when I saw it for the first time, <laughs> y'all couldn't tell me nothing. Cause I was like, listen, this is all the things I've uh, been learning. Um, Shavada, who came on my very first episode, uh, if you can stick with me, the, the sound quality was bad, but y'all, the information was phenomenal. Um, and so just really good things. Uh, I learned um, just, again, how to do all things credit. And that was that was a beautiful thing for me. Um, and since then, another thing that I've been doing is reading all these finance books and I'm realizing, oh my gosh, like, I have to invite more people on to talk about finances because when I tell you if, if I, and I think I had a pretty good public school education, like it was back, you know, when public school was good, I'm 35, but, um, but I thought I had a really good public school education. And so now um, listening to these books, I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know 
anything. And so this year, um, this this season two, we, um, my producer and I, we are absolutely, shout out to Liz, we are going to have a book list of books that we've been reading, that we have learned about, that we um, are highly recommended because, again, this goes with with the motto, the mission, right? Of each one, teach one. Um, and so, yeah, we're excited about that. Now, so that's what I've been doing, reading books, getting my life together. Oh, y'all, how did I almost forget? I started therapy. Oh my gosh. How have I been raw dog in life like this? Why did nobody, like I had Dr. LaShawn Williams on um, and she talked to us all about therapy. At the time I was not in therapy. That was 10 months ago and 10 months, y'all, my life has been tremendously changed. Um, shout out to LaShawn for teaching us, for having that time to go through and tell us, listen, I believe all black folks need to go to, to therapy. I believe we all need healing. I believe that we've all done something um, that, or have had something happen to us uh, aside from just the systemic racism and oppression that we experience every day. Um, in our lives, like there are also other things that come with that, with just being black that you need to go to therapy for. And so that has been beautiful and tremendous. And my therapist, a black woman, shout out to her. When I tell y'all she be on my head, she does not let me get by. She's like, so tell me why you did that. So tell me why you think, okay, so that, whoo, y'all listen, I'll be having to sit back and really evaluate because um, I want to grow. I want to be better. And so it was beautiful. My kids are in therapy. There was a beautiful program um, that was local uh, here in the Dallas area where they got like 16 free sessions and their therapists are phenomenal. And so um, anyway, I just, I was like, man, this is, this is incredible. Like just the opportunity to learn more about yourself, why you do the things you do, um, how to best cope with those things. And I think so many of us go, I'm good. Like, again, we addressed that in the episode with LaShawn. What does that even mean? I'm good. I'm surviving. I get up, I go to work every day. I do this, I do that. Um, but what does that really mean? So whew, next thing, <laughs> what do we got going on for this season, y'all? Because I am so excited. We are going to talk about all things, women's health, education, finances, um, uh, gardening, like you name it, we finna get into it because I really want it. And as you guys already know, if you or anyone, you know, wants to be on the podcast, you say, Hey, like I, I do this and I would love to share this. I promise you, you are an expert in your field. Like whatever it is, if you're like, yo, I'm black in tech. I want to tell y'all how to get in. I am, um, a fourth generation farmer. I am a novice farmer, whatever, like, come on, let's talk to you. Let's learn because I just, I am so excited with all the knowledge that you guys have to share. Um, and I think sometimes we go, I just do this. Like, like who wants to hear? We do. We want to know. We want to learn because we haven't heard and we don't know about so many of the things that you guys are getting into. So I appreciate that. Um, also, when we talk about women's health, I hope you know, man, I do not want you to tune out because you have women in your life, because you know women, you're around women, you see women. And so it is beautiful to learn about um certain things that affect us um, and that could possibly affect you as well. So um, no matter how you identify, I really hope that you uh, listen to those episodes because they are fire. Okay. Um, and we just have some, some incredible experts that are coming on and talking about really great things. So um, again, I hope that wraps up everything because I have been trying to get that out for so long, but Y'all, it took me some time in therapy to, to really be able to come back and say, y'all, this is what happened. This is why I fell off. This is what I've been doing. This is what I want to do. Um, and I absolutely want to take the podcast to the next level. I want it to be everywhere. Um, as you already know, you can listen to it on any streaming platform, um, any major platform that you listen to. You can catch it on YouTube. Um, and so... Again, I love y'all. Y'all are my heart. I hope that you continue to like, share, comment, um, and then give me feedback. Come on, come on to my podcast. Let's talk. Um, what is it that you do? And so, um, but until then, I just want you to know that I appreciate you. Um, and I am excited for season three because we have some great episodes. So I love y'all. Till next time. 